Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on chunking math lessons. Um, I will go ahead and get started in order to honor everyone's time. I know that that is something that seems like it is very precious, and yet sometimes I feel like I we don't have enough time in the day to do anything. So. Um, if any of you have been on any of the webinars, uh, these first few slides are um, the same for most of our presentations. Um, this is our team. Um, we have worked very hard and big shout out to the EdTech Service Department for um, keeping us all sane and helping us through this transition. Um, and the Educational Service Department for all of the teamwork that we have done um, and also working with our special ed folks to keep FAPE in the forefront of our mind. If there's any questions that you have about anything, please feel free to reach out to any of the members of our team and we will answer any questions you might have. Um, a few norms that we have for these webinars. Um, your chat, microphone, and camera was disabled due to large size of the groups. Um, please, if you have any questions, go ahead and use the Q&A function to post your questions. Um, the responses will be visible to everyone. And um, there is a few people that are on our team that are monitoring the chat and the Q&A for me as I go through the webinar. Okay, raise your hand if you would like to use your microphone. We can unmute you and answer questions that you might have in real time. And please do not forget that there are actually two surveys that are available in these Zoom webinars. One is the Act 48 credit link, um, and the other one is the survey for the actual webinar. So please feel free to um, click on those at the end, and uh, somebody should be putting the actual Google slide deck into the chat. So you will have access to all of these links and resources. So some of the LIU 12 resources that we have in all of these webinars, um, again, Act 48 credit, you will be directed to complete the Act 48 credit form um, with your PPID which is for PA educators only. If you do not fall under that um, educator tab, um, please reach out to somebody um, in our ed service department um, and we can figure out how you can get Act 48 credit hours depending on your position. All of these webinars are archived on our LIU Learn On site. They are recorded. So if you don't get a chance to see some that had already happened in the last few days, please feel free to peruse through those and um, get any really good information that people are putting out there. Um, this is actually the link to our recordings. Um, and then the resource site is that learnon.iu12.org. Um, please check that out if you are a district that you aren't really sure what your continuity of education plan is or if you are stuck in where to find resources there are so many great things that people have populated onto the resource site so that is free to share if you have friends that are not just within our IU footprint, but anywhere else. Um, please, again, share out. This is uh, unprecedented times, and we want to make sure that we are 
trying to provide the best information for everyone out there. Okay, so expectations for online learning. Um, just emphasizing the need for continuity of education for all students. Um, please remember when we are considering FAPE, we must provide access and education to all students. While we might typically think about FAPE just applying to special education students, in this case, it applies to students who may not have connectivity and access to online resources. So there should be some sort of the continuity of education plan for your district where somebody is providing educational services for those students that do not have uh, continuity, or I'm sorry, connectivity to internet. So general education population, and again, ensuring that students with disabilities have equal access to the same opportunities. Okay, equitable access for all students in a good MTSS model. Okay, as we think about online learning, really important to remember that less is more. We do not want to expect that students are completing the same amount of work that they would be completing if they were sitting face-to-face -face in your classroom. So one of the things that we will be talking about here is how can we chunk our mathematics instruction into more feasible um, eligible content areas for students. Um, we need to prioritize and we need to balance what is important if your district is moving towards planned instruction, we need to also take into account that they might be in a situation where they have parents who are either still working or are not as adept at technology and might not understand how to help their students. So, just keeping those things in mind um, as you figure out what you're putting on for your students to complete. It is very, very important as we talk about the online learning that they are seeing your face. It doesn't matter if you are making a video and sending it out to your students, just telling them that you miss them and you wish them well. Um, if you have Zoom capabilities and your district is allowing you to have Zoom conversations or Google Meet or Hangouts, um, it is just important, very, very important for students to see your face. This is a very traumatic time for everyone and it makes it a whole lot easier if students have the opportunity to see your face when we think about the socio-emotional learning aspect. This goes back to the less is more with the prioritizing and balancing. Um, we want to limit the length of the video. Think of the age of your students. If you teach kindergarten students, you're looking to five to six minutes of time maximum. Okay, you wanna make sure that you maximize whatever information you're giving them and just think about how old they are and how much capacity they have to actually sit and listen. Okay, be sure that you are clear in your objectives and your expectations for online learning. Make sure that you identify a timeline to complete the task. I've seen some school districts sending out weekly agendas and having students check in with their teachers and then having them, their teachers saying, okay, you know, get through this set of expectations on Monday Please don't feel that you have to meet all of the requirements on that day. 
but um, to just make sure that they are completing it and they have some idea of a due date. Um, and please make sure we are organizing and sequencing instructions. Depending on what age group of students that you teach, this is going to be super important for teaching our little ones. Um, there's somebody that's going to have to be able to understand the sequence of instructions for them so they can actually help them get through whatever the online task is. And being a mother myself of a nine-year-old and an 11-year-old, um, I still have to organize and sequence their instructions for them so they know exactly what is um, needed to be completed for each day. Here is our TAC team for math. Um, Dr. Becky has just joined us here at the IU and she is actually on this call as well. So if anybody needs anything with um, early math, she is our K-2 um, connoisseur. Um, I'm Corinne, I'm the one that's talking. I am also both literacy and math, but I am actually certified in grades four through 12. And then Mr. Matt McLaughlin is our primary and middle level math specialist. And he um, is probably a familiar face to you as well if any of you have done the early numeracy series um, or some of the other things that Matt and I have done together. Okay, so this is just again an introduction slide. Um, I am Corinne Connor. I do both math and literacy, um, but I am secondary math trained and I have just jumped into the literacy realm by becoming letters certified um, and am actually gonna have to take this piece off because I just started a new doctoral program somewhere else. So <laughs> remind myself to take that off. So um, I have a few outcomes here today for us to get through. Number one, please just breathe. As we provide content to our students, we need to remember, again, they just need to feel safe. They need to see your face. They need to connect with you. They need to know that you are thinking about them as much as they are thinking about you. And I always, always in the forefront of my mind think Maslow before Bloom. I don't want to sit my own children in front of a computer for more than two and a half to three hours per day. And that is with quite a few breaks in between because I know it's just too much for them to do. So our two other outcomes that we have is we're just going to identify what chunking material for e-learning means and um, give you some best practice and resources for the why and the how of chunking our math lessons. Okay, so real quick, here is the definition of chunking. Okay, we are breaking down information into bite-sized pieces so the brain can digest new information. And the reason we want to do this is because when we think about working memory, that is the place where we hold our information and our working memory actually only holds a limited amount of information at one time. Okay, which I'm going to get into in the next slide what I mean by the working memory. Um, there is a link at the bottom of this slide. So when you do have this um, Google slide deck, you can certainly click in, click, excuse me, click into that link and you will be able to get some of this information from where I got the information as well. So working memory is limited in capacity. 
Okay, a, actually a researcher by the name of Miller stated that working memory could hold seven plus or minus two, so maybe five to six, chunks of information at once. However, that was a study that was done about 20 years ago. They have since found that the number is actually closer to four to five bits of information that a working memory can actually hold. So cognitive researchers are very understanding to the fact that capacity of working memory also depends on the type of information and the ability of the person that you are teaching. Okay, so when we think about chunking information and we're trying to move children from having the information in their working memory to long-term memory. Okay, we want to think about this in terms of online learning, that it's really important if a learner's working memory is full, excess information will drop out, meaning that it just will disappear. So this is a very big challenge for us as we are designing online learning. So we want to make sure that if we are explaining something that's complex, the learner must have several factors and several pieces of chunked information in their mind to understand it, which is why we want to chunk these math lessons into more bite-sized pieces. Okay, so when we think about the other implications for online learning, when we're talking about math lessons, you wanna think about how you are delivering the content. Again, this is a local decision, whether you are allowed to do live teacher videos with students or pre-recorded videos. Um, in my experience with mathematics education, especially for students that um, were either absent a lot or were in homebound instruction, when you are trying to give live video, um, you want to make sure that you are doing some worked problems with the students so that they are seeing what type of steps they have to perform. Um, that can be done also on a pre-recorded video. And we have some resources later on in the presentation for assessment and um, how you can actually provide that content. Um, this does work for linear instruction and discovery learning as well. And we want to make sure as we are creating these online learning sections for students that we are grouping conceptually re related information because that's going to make it easier to understand for the students. Okay, here are the four steps to think about when you are chunking your instruction. Okay, obviously we want to look at the highest level first. So we're looking at our eligible content standards, trying to figure out what is the important piece that students have to know. Now obviously with testing out of the question for this year, sometimes we might want to think about if you're teaching a third grade class, maybe getting in touch with someone that teaches the fourth grade class and asking them what is one way that we want to have students learn multiplication and if the fourth grade teacher says that the standard algorithm is a way that they would like every child to learn multiplication then maybe we put some of the other types of multiplication on hold or use them for scaffolding purposes um, and really try and hone in on multiplication using the standard algorithm. 
Another step to chunking instruction is to divide the modules or divide the eligible content, excuse me, into modules, lessons, topics. Deciding what's most important, again, from that content standard. What do I need to teach? What do the students have to know? What are non-negotiables? Okay, avoid introducing multiple objects or topics in one lesson. Less is always more. That's why we wanna group things together that make sense. Okay, and then we want to assess in various ways to ensure that working memory check-in happens. So if students are not understanding, we might need to break the topic down further. So that's when we think about task analyses and we think about other scaffolds of instruction. Okay, here are some resources that I found talking about organizing content to maximize learning. Um, not sure, some schools use Schoology, some people have other where, platforms or warehouses. Um, you might have a different structure that was already given to you um, from your district, but if you aren't sure how to organize content, um, please feel free to look at these different resources for some ideas. Okay, we connected a planning document in here for um, what's called the Oreo method. So if you are not sure how you can use a lesson template for online learning, please feel free to use that Oreo method. Um, and of course, there we go, sorry. This bar here seems to get in my way. Um, after that, if you think about elements of instruction, you consider objectives and criteria for success. Whether you use that planning document or not, that is up to you and up to your district. Um, sequencing the lesson the same way that you would sequence a lesson in your regular face-to-face -face classroom. But again, just remembering less is more. Um, I think they say take your regular lesson and cut it about in half, and that should be what you're expecting students to um, work on for the day. Uh, videos for instruction, again, keeping them short and sweet worked problems to assist with instruction, having students practice three to four problems, and then having you check it. We don't want students to practice 10 to 15 problems and then realize that they were doing them all wrong because when we practice things that are wrong, then we tend to remember the wrong way of doing it. Um, always giving good authentic feedback that is also concise and um, really gets back to exactly what the student was having trouble with or if they got it right away, moving right on to assessing and releasing them as they understand the content. Here are some more resources that um, are math TAC team has developed. Um, of course, SAS has materials and resources. Dr. Sarah Powell has some really great videos and information on her website. Three Act Math and Three Act Tasks are great resources um, to try and get students to practice with the math practice standards. Um, Ed Puzzle, Math by Example, and algebra by example, our middle level and um, eighth grade level has a ton of resources on there that you can actually print out. So for, and they're free. Um, so for those of you that have students in your district who have connectivity issues, there are some really good things that you can print out from those two resources. Here are some assessment resources that we um, like to use a lot. 
Flipgrid, if you have Google Classroom and you want to use Google Forms. Uh, Rocketbook is um, a place where they do have free pages and an app that you can use. Um, during COVID right now, GoFormative is free. Um, and Quizlet is another good one. Um, Screencastify is also a good free resource for you to video yourself um, in giving instruction to students or thinking about having them video themselves and sending it back to you. Okay, so here is again our Learn On site. There's your link to any of the webinars that we have if you want to sign up for any of them that are upcoming or down further it has the link for what the webinars are that were already recorded okay and the bit.ly up here has the eval for the actual webinar and then down here is your Act 48 um, bit.ly for your Act 48 hours. So please note that, again, that these are case sensitive um, bit.lys. So please make sure that when you, if you're not clicking on them, if you're trying to just type them in, um, that you are paying attention to what is capitalized and what is not. So. That is all that I have to say. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. And I am coming on um, video. So I'm not sure if um, my people that were monitoring, um, was there any questions or Anything in the chat that we needed to clarify? We did not um, have any questions at all. I just posted the bit.ly for the web eval. Um, I typed it wrong the first time, so I apologize. Um, so, and I'm getting to the second one right now. Thank you, Lori. And then so there are the two for the web eval and the Act 48 are in your chat box. So you can just click on them. Okay. And did they go to all they did panelists? Not. Sorry. Yeah, I know. This is this is the very interesting part when we have to click all of the appropriate little boxes, panelists and attendees and all of that. So does anybody have any specific questions as we load those bit.lys into the chat for um, anybody here that is on the TAC team that we can answer for you um, specifically about instruction chunking your math instruction or um, any other math instruction related questions that we can answer and corinne are you doing um an office hour later today related i do to not i do not have an office hour today um they were all full <laughs> when I signed up for this um, Zoom, but I have an office hour tomorrow that is supposed to be um, literacy, but um, I can always open up my Zoom room if um, anybody specifically wants to send me an email. Um, I can certainly just send out my Zoom room um, to you and I could chat with you. Um, oh, we had a question. Suggestion for how to have students submit math work for us to check. 
so a different couple different ideas that um, I have seen that have worked well. Um, there's the old, if you want to have them like take a picture of it. I mean, a lot would depend on whether or not you guys are one to one in your district. Um, I'm not sure, Jessica, what district you were from, but if you are not one to one, um, I would suggest maybe using some sort of um, platform where students can actually write on. Um, PowerPoint has an extension that they can write on um, the actual PowerPoint slide and then they can send it back to you. Um, Google has the same type of thing. You can open up a Google Doc and uh, if you use Google Classroom and they can answer questions through there. Um, again, you could have them take a picture or scan in work and email it to you. Um, it just kind of depends on what your actual platform is at your district and how you are planning to get the work to them and whether they have connectivity to internet or not. Um, if they don't have internet access, then you know, that's going to be a different situation. You're going to have um, kiddos that are getting maybe packets of information, and then you're going to have to figure out how those packets are getting back to you or back to your district. So that would be kind of, um, if you, I mean, if you want some more clarification, I can certainly talk to you specifically if you wanted to let me know what your district had in mind, we can um, do that. But I'm going to open up my Zoom room here in a couple minutes for the rest of the hour that we have. So um, if anybody has any specific questions and you wanna come to the Zoom, um, I can, put my actual um, Zoom in here. So let me do that. Corinne, we just had a question too about providing an example of chunking math. I'm thinking we're kind of running short on our time in this Zoom room. So maybe right. um, if, if to follow up on that question, um, if you would want to move over then to Corinne's Zoom room, sure. we can follow up with that. Yeah, I just um, popped my Zoom link into the chat. So I will, I'll give it another minute if people want to copy that um, so they can paste it into their Zoom and I will open my Zoom room up and if anybody has specific answer, or answers, yeah, specific questions, um, we can do that for the next um, half an hour Corinne, or so. Corinne, can you make that for all panelists and attendees? Oh, do it. shoot. <laughs> Didn't I just say that to Lori? Darn it. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna sh leave this meeting and then I'll open up my Zoom room. So feel free to come on over and ask any questions that you might have. So thanks for attending. Um, please reach out if you do not have time right now to ask questions, but you have questions, just reach out via email to any of us and we can answer them. So thanks for your time and good luck.